My lab is interested in imaging the eye, one of the only places where you can look inside the human body and see a complete tissue full of neurons, epithelial cells, and vasculature. When light enters the eye, it gets focused down to the back of the eye on a thin layer of tissue called the retina, where it gets detected by a specialized neuron called the photoreceptor. These photoreceptors don't exist all by themselves, but require the nourishment of a surrounding cell called the retinal pigment epithelial cell, or RPE. RPE cells historically have been very difficult to image because they contain pigment. And so any light that enters the eye gets captured and absorbed by the retinal pigment epithelial cells, making it difficult to image them using optical techniques. We've developed a new way to image the RPE based on the use of an existing FDA-approved dye called inosinin green, or ICG. This dye is injected intravenously, where it travels up to the eye and is taken up rapidly by the RPE cells. After a relatively uniform uptake, it settles into a heterogeneous pattern with neighboring cells having different amounts of fluorescence. And this heterogeneity is what enables us to distinguish neighboring cells from each other. Surprisingly, we found that with a repeat injection one year later in the same eye, that the same pattern was formed. And so we could use this fluorescent signature as a way to track the eye across time at a cellular level. To acquire these images, we use a technique called adaptive optics, which is a technique that allows us to image at cellular level resolution inside the eye. Because we deploy our instrument in a clinical setting, we have access to a special population of patients, including a patient with Bietti crystalline dystrophy, a disease that is thought to affect the RPE. We found in a short a time span of seven months that there was a change in the fluorescent signature of the RPE indicating that the RP was likely to be disrupted in the early stages of disease. We're currently exploring different ways to translate this technology to the clinic where it can be more readily accessible.